Investor.com Podcast. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of InvestorIdeas.com Podcast, looking at cannabis news, stocks to watch, as well as insights from thought leaders and experts. In today's podcast, we look at announcements from Chiron Life Sciences Corporation, trading on the TSX Venture as KHRN, and the OTCQB as KHRNF. Abacus Health Products Incorporated trading on the CSE as ABCS and the OTCQX as ABAHF. The Supreme Cannabis Company Incorporated trading on the TSX as FIRE and the OTCQX as SPRWF. Cureleaf Holdings Incorporated trading on the CSE as CURA and the OTCQX as CURLF. Harvest One Cannabis Incorporated trading on the TSX Venture as HVT and the OTCQX as HRVOF as well as Next Tech AR Solutions, trading on the OTCQB as NEXCF, and the CSE as NTAR. Starting with Chiron Life Sciences Corporation, who announced today that it has received approval from the National Cultivar Registry and the Technical Direction of the ICA for the commercialization of 17 strains of cannabis. The approvals bring the total number of registered strains to 22 and positions the company to commercialize and distribute CBD cannabis, which is currently being cultivated at Chiron's facility near Ibag, Colombia, which this development, which results from a successful ICA operational review, firmly positions the company to commercialize its medical cannabis product sales in the third quarter of 2019. The company intends to begin commercial production of CBD extract in 2019. And this production will be used primarily to produce medicine and be sold to patients individually as specifically prepared formulations. In addition to the commercialization of CBD production, the company's proprietary psychoactive cannabis varietals, uh, the THC varietals, have now undergone and completed a rigorous regulatory process to receive strain approval from ICA. With these strain approvals, Chiron can now work to obtain approval of the THC strains for commercial quote insurance with the quota technical group. Before commercial quotas can be awarded, the company must demonstrate an established market demand and distribution method, and based on the potential addressable patient network Chiron has established with medical associations and the ILANS acquisition, the company believes it's established a leading position in terms of receiving a favorable quota allocation. Alvaro Torres, CEO of Chiron Life Sciences, commented that Chiron is continually focused on expediting our timing to market while ensuring the highest standards of product quality and consistency. With these approvals secured, Chiron is now poised to introduce its medical cannabis products in Colombia by the third quarter of this year, which once again demonstrates the company's in-depth understanding of patients' needs, its strategic and evidence-based approach, unparalleled regulatory knowledge, and its leadership role in the Latin American market. Uh, so I mentioned yesterday there's the one company, Canabco, uh, which just got one of the largest uh, sort of growing development lots awarded in Colombia. So now they're going to be one of the biggest producers there. But Chiron Life Sciences is definitely one of the most established companies in the Latin American community, not just in Colombia, but in a few countries down in that area. Uh, and now they're again getting the approval for their strains so they can actually start selling this medical product to the Colombian community as well as shipping it internationally. Uh, Next, looking at Abacus Health Products Incorporated, who today announced a new retail purchase order by Value Merchandisers Company for its line of CBD medic products. So Value Merchandisers is a corporate food distributor serving over 3,800 independently owned supermarkets in 30 U.S. states and who has confirmed an order with Abacus that will see 11 SKUs from the CBD medic product line placed in 350 retail stores across six states with expansion to more than 1,000 locations over the next six months. And this new purchase order increases Abacus' total retail store count to approximately 2,550 locations in 15 states throughout the U.S. And the company remains on track to reach 4,000 retail locations by the end of the third quarter of 2019. Value Merchandise is a trusted name in the health and wellness segment. We're delighted that they have chosen to introduce CBD Medic to their network, said Perry Antelman, CEO of Abacus. This purchase order further illustrates how we continue to execute on our retail growth strategy and add retail chains with significant presence across the U.S. Uh, so again, as I've said before, the CBD market right now, even though it is still pretty much legal to purchase uh, across all 50 states, the actual, as far as selling and distribution in each state is getting dicier by the months. Uh, there's a few states who are looking to completely ban. New York just recently mentioned that they're going to ban CBD products from their stores. Uh, and there's a couple other states as well that have that potential. And as well, there's again the testing regulations that still aren't really consistent across the board or across state lines. Um, but again, looking for CBD distribution deals across retailers is what every company is doing right now. And they're seeing this trend more and more that more companies are getting their products into stores or at least through online retailers. 
Next, looking at the Supreme Cannabis Company Incorporated, who today announced it's entered into a definitive agreement under which Supreme Cannabis will acquire all of the issued and outstanding shares of the privately held Truvera Incorporated to be affected by the way of a three-cornered amalgamation between Truvera, Supreme Cannabis, and a wholly owned subsidiary of Supreme Cannabis. So the transaction is valued at 14.7 million common shares of Supreme Cannabis, giving the transaction an approximate dollar value of 20 million. Located in Toronto, Truveri is a private cannabis company serving the Canadian international cannabis markets through its wholly owned subsidiaries, Canadian Clinical Cannabinoids Incorporated and Truveri Europe B.V. So CCC operates a 5,000 square foot health cannabis licensed facility in Scarborough, Ontario. Um, and it's mainly focused on a state-of-the-art facility to produce high-quality cannabis extracts, including concentrates and vaping liquids. The recent addition of Health Canada's amended cannabis regulations creates a distinct opportunity for Supreme Cannabis to establish a leading position in the cannabis extract markets. With the acquisition of Truvera, we've secured a Toronto-based facility equipped to extract our high-quality inputs for concentrates and vaping liquids in the near term, said Navdeep Dhaliwal, CEO of Supreme Cannabis. Truvera's operations also provide an additional entry point to Europe's CBD wellness market, where Truvera Europe has successfully launched multiple CBD products in various jurisdictions. Truvera's Canadian and European operations are managed by a senior leadership team with a wealth of experience manufacturing and launching products in highly regulated industries such as the life sciences and pharmaceuticals. The Supreme Cannabis Company has a strong track record for ex executional excellence. With their support and robust corporate services, we look forward to strengthening our operations in Canada and globally, said Jeff Adams, CEO of Truvera. In the near term, we will continue to build Truvera's CBD offerings in Europe and position the brand to serve the international medical markets. So the Supreme Cannabis Company, like most Canadian companies right now, is setting themselves up for that extraction and concentrate and edibles market come October. Uh, but realistically, those products won't be hitting shelves until late December or early January. But every company is preparing for that market and have distribution or extraction facilities set up uh, throughout Canada, not just one province, is a big advantage for any company right now as Canada is large. Next, looking at Cureleaf Holdings Incorporated, who today announced that it signed a definitive agreement to acquire GR Companies Incorporated, also known as Grassroots, which is the lar largest privately vertically integrated multi state operator in a cash and stock deal valued at approximately $875 million. So this transaction will solidify Cureleaf's position as the world's largest cannabis company by revenue and the largest in the U.S. across key operating metrics. Um, the highly complementary acquisition brings together the largest public and largest private multi-state operators in the U.S. to offer a full range of products to consumers in states across the country. As a market leader throughout the Midwest, Grassroots has a portfolio of 61 dispensary licenses with 20 operating today and 17 cultivation and processing licenses that will substantially accelerate Cureleaf's continued expansion across the nation. So with this full acquisition, uh, Cureleaf's presence will now be in 12, or sorry, 19 instead of 12 states, and the combined company will have 131 dispensary licenses, 68 operational locations, 20 cultivation sites, and 26 processing facilities. With the acquisition, Cureleaf will also add new markets in Arkansas, Michigan, North Dakota, Oklahoma, and Vermont, giving it total access to approximately 177 million people. With the acquisition of Grassroots and the pending acquisition of Select, Cureleaf is the world's largest cannabis company by both revenue and operating presence, said Joseph Lazardi, CEO of Cureleaf. With a combined 68 open dispensaries, this transaction significantly accelerates our expansion strategy and strengthens our reach across the medical and adult use markets. In addition, it enhances the depths of our retail and wholesale platform across the country by leveraging our scale as well as our market leading capabilities and expertise. We will continue to deliver our value to our shareholders. So that's a pretty big deal as far as uh, U.S. companies, the vertically integrated and multi-state operators are still few and far between as far as U.S. companies. And actually, potentially one of the biggest U.S. companies after Cureleaf right now would be Canopy Growth once they go through that full acquisition of acreage. But that's dependent on changing the federal legislation surrounding legal cannabis in the U.S. So that's sort of just a sleeping giant for now. But it's nice to see that yeah, there is a multi-state operator that's expanding rapidly in the U.S. to consolidate some of those products and ideas. Next, looking at Harvest One Cannabis, who announced that the company, through its wholly owned subsidiary, Sata Farm Limited, has entered into a supply agreement with Gen Canna Global US, dated on Gen June 4th. Uh, so under the terms of the agreement, Gen Canna will supply Harvest One with GMP certified CBD oil and finished products for distribution in regulated markets in the US, Europe, and around the globe. Currently under the Dreamwater, Sata Farm, and Live Relief brands for an initial term of two years. 
with an industry leading 38,000 plus retail distribution points around the globe, including Walmart, US, CBS, Kroger, Shoppers Drug Mart, Loblaw, Holland, and Baron Boots. Harvest One is quickly becoming a leading global house of brands in the health, wellness, and self-care sectors with cannabis, cannabis infused, and all natural product offerings. From Santa Farms patented gel pens, CBD capsules, to Dreamwater's all natural single shot sleep products, and the recent addition of Live Relief, Canada's leading all natural topical pain relief cream. The agreement with Gen Canada ensures a consistent supply of premium quality hemp derived CBD for infusion in our existing products and further product innovation. So working with the world-class partners like Gen Canada to supply premium quality, traceable, consistent ingredients, all from GMP certified facilities, is critical to our core strategy at Harvest One to only offer customers best in class premium products with consistent and predictable effects in delivery formats that they've come to understand and demand, said Grant Forsey, Chief Executive Officer of Harvest One. Mr. Forsey added that this agreement signals the beginning of a global relationship with Gen Canada under which we will continue to innovate and fuse our existing portfolio of products and bring new products to market under our well-recognized and trusted Satifarm, Dreamwater, and Live Relief brands. So this is the plan to get these products on shelves globally. Uh, Harvest One, again, the fact that they are already in a lot of those distribution centers like Walmart, CVS, Kroger, Shoppers Drug Mart, Loblaws. Um, and if you've been paying attention to the news on those products, those are all companies, aside from Kroger, they are looking into CBD and Shoppers Drug Mart is pretty much the medical cannabis supplier for BC right now. Uh, CVS as well, is looking into C CBD products on their shelves, uh, but there has been some confusion about that as some of the products are, don't actually contain CBD, some of them are actually just hemp seed products. And then Walmart still having a strong stance against CBD products, but I'm definitely on board with the wellness products, so the dream water uh, in that sense. Next looking at Next Tech AR Solutions, who announced it's entered into an agreement with Touchstone Home Products to ARitize its product line. So Next Tech AR and Touchstone Home Products are launching a six product step out of web-based AR experiences for e-retail with future plans to fully ARitize the Touchstone Home Products line of home furnishing, harnessing the power of conversion boosting web AR experiences. So Frank Quinslick, Touchstone Home Products Vice President in Marketing explains that future shopping is a very tangible process. With Next Tech AR technology, we're able to bring our TV lift cabinet and fireplace showroom experiences to life. Online shoppers can view the TV lift cabinet of electric fireplaces from every angle and zoom in to see the quality construction up close. We're pleased to offer this in-depth product view to our customers who aren't able to visit our showroom in person. Next Tech AR ties e-commerce solutions, a monthly software as a service software licensing and develop model in which software is licensed on a subscription basis while being centrally hosted in the cloud. And Nextrep's SAAS subscription platform enables companies like Touchstone to transform 2D images into 3D AR experiences. So Gartner recently reported that roughly 100 million consumers will be shopping in augmented reality on, online and in-store by 2020, roughly. Retailers are under increasing pressure to explain the purpose of physical stores and take control of the fulfillment and return process for cross-channel execution, said Hannah Karki, Principal Research Analyst at Gartner. At the same time, consumers are progressively defining the value provided by the experiences they receive from retailers. As a result of these pressures, retailers are turning to AR and VR to offer consumers a unified retail experience inside and outside retail stores. So Next Tech AR is building out of its AR and AI e-commerce offering, which include use of AI to create a guided and knowledgeable curator, and it can be programmed to use with the e-commerce or for education and medical device market. Uh, so Next Tech AR does have a few cannabis uh, partnerships that it's used so far, but again, the fact that it's working with also a furniture company makes a lot more sense for the AR usage. Uh, but just interesting to note that that's the expected trend is more and more AR and VR developments for these companies, and that especially if you look at online versus retail sales, sales it makes a lot of sense for the long term that most companies will have to adopt some sort of VR AR solution for viewing their in-store merchandise so people basically aren't going to the stores anymore it's a similar idea of how most malls are closing so an interesting concept and definitely not the only company that's making that technology but a company that's definitely made a name for itself trying to focus on the cannabis market early on that's all for today's podcast enjoy your wednesday that's all for today's podcast podcast is now a certified word trademark on the blockchain through cognate incorporated cm certification InvestorIdeas.com podcasts are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. 
If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor of this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website, and this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment. Investor Ideas does not condone the use of cannabis except where permissible by law. Our site does not possess, distribute, or sell cannabis products.